Hello and welcome to another installment of 50 things you might not know about a particular video game. And this time it's Tekken 2. Whenever I get the urge to play a game from my childhood, I always try to play it with a sense of purpose, rather than just solely playing it for fun. And that's where this series was born. So what can I tell you about Tekken 2? Well it was the first Tekken game I ever played, but not the first Tekken game I owned. I played it at my friend's house, but by the time my parents bought me a PlayStation, Tekken 3 was already released, and they bought me that one instead, much to my delight. So then my Tekken ownership kind of went backwards really. I got Tekken 2 and then I finally bought Tekken 1. So what can I tell you about Tekken 2 that's actually about the game, rather than my personal experiences? Well let's start the rundown of 50 interesting facts you might not know about Tekken 2. We start right at the beginning of the game, with the intro movie in fact. Straight away Heihachi is seen climbing up a cliff face in a storm. This scene follows on from Kazuya's canonical ending on Tekken 1, where he releases an unconscious Heihachi off the top of that same cliff. God, look at the size of his feet, and that smile is so memorable. Like many games, Tekken 2 was released in the arcade before it came out on home consoles. And as the arcade version came out first, there are some differences between that and the PlayStation version. And the difference that I want to mention here is that there are at least two additional moves. One given to Bruce and one to Lee. Both of these moves were removed on the PS1 version of the game. Bruce's move is performed by pressing down and right kick, then left kick. It's similar to another move that he has on both the arcade and console versions of T2, which is done by pressing right punch, down and right kick, and then left kick. This version of the move is useful for combos and also hitting opponents as they get up from the ground. Lee's arcade only move is performed by pressing down and right kick twice, and then right kick on its own. It's a shortened version of another existing move. On the console version, you have to perform three low kicks before the mid kick. Back on the arcade version, you have the option of hitting two low kicks and then the medium kick, or three. Do you know of any other moves that didn't make it to the console version? Let me know in the comments. When playing as the vast majority of characters on arcade mode, Kazuya will be the game's sub-boss on stage nine. However, there are two exceptions to this rule. If you choose either Devil or Angel and fight your way to stage 9, Jun will appear in Kazuya's place. You'll be fighting on Jun's stage, but Kazuya's theme will still play. The second exception occurs if you choose to play as Kazuya. Instead of him fighting some kind of clone or doppelganger, Heihachi will take Kazuya's place as the sub-boss on stage 9. Again, it'll be Kazuya's theme, Eternal Darkness, that we'll play. We're going to jump back to the game's intro for a brief moment. There is a scene with martial law, and in the background you can see some outfits hung up on the wall. The yellow and black outfit was actually one of his costumes from the original Tekken. So this is a nice little reference to the first game in the series. Thanks for this, Tekken devs. Did you know that the entire roster of characters from Tekken 1 returned on Tekken 2? Or did they? Technically there's one character that appeared on the original Tekken who did not make a return on Tekken 2. And that character is Jack. On Tekken 2 he was replaced by the new and updated Jack 2, which became a trend in the series, to almost always include an updated version of the Jack robot. When you first start up Tekken 2, you'll be greeted with this main menu background and the Tekken 2 logo. However, once you unlock all the characters on the game, you'll be greeted by this menu screen instead. You can see Kazuya's eyes in the Tekken 2 logo. If you've ever been fighting on Heihachi's stage for any length of time, which you should because his theme is named As Bald As, and it's one of the game's best in my opinion. You might have noticed some writing on the floor of the Pagoda Temple. 
It actually reads Heihachi and Kazumi, making this the first mention of Heihachi's wife, Kazumi, for the first time in the series. Although she was mentioned in Tekken the Motion Picture in 1998, Kazumi wouldn't make her full debut until Tekken 7 in 2015. Continuing along a similar line of thought, in Wang's ending, he walks up to a grave, pours wine on it and drinks in this deceased person's memory. Did you know that the name on the grave reveals to us that this is Jinpachi Mishima's grave? Yes, the same Jinpachi who is Heihachi's father and Jin's grandfather, who went on to appear as the final boss on Tekken 5. Interestingly, Jinpachi is mentioned in Wang's backstory in the game's manual. But if, like me, you never bothered to read the manual when you were younger, because you just wanted to crack on with fighting people, then this is a really interesting revelation. There are some moves on Tekken 2, and also in future games, that are omitted from the in-game command list, but still appear on the game. So they're like hidden moves for the player to find. One example should be a familiar one these days. By pressing back and left punch twice with Yoshimitsu, then pressing down and left kick twice, then forward and right kick, you can perform this handy combination of some of Yoshi's moves. I remember first finding this on Tekken 3, not knowing that it had already appeared on Tekken 2 and even on Tekken 1. If you leave your character standing around for a length of time, I think it's about a minute, a thought bubble will appear as if they're bored and they've just started daydreaming. Here are what I believe to be all the different thought bubbles the game has to offer. If I've missed any, again, just let me know. Okay, first up we have an apple. Then we have an aubergine, which is also called an eggplant. Next, we have a bell. I think it's worth saying that I'm not sure whether the thought bubbles are specific to the characters, but King thinking of a bell could refer to the church where his stage is set. Next up we have a wedge of cheese. There's also a cup of coffee. And then there's this flag with the letter S, which I would assume is taken from another Namco game, but I'm not sure which. Leave a comment if you know. Next we have an ice cream cone. And we also have a mushroom or toadstool. Sometimes a character will be thinking about one of the ghosts from Pac-Man. This is the red ghost known as Blinky. There is also the blue ghost, Inky, who is featured on the game as well. And of course, no Pac-Man references would be complete without the title character himself. Next, we have a sweet. And there is a tree stump as well. There's also a beetle of some description. And a strawberry too. The last one I believe is one of the ships from the Namco game, Galaga. There is also something else that happens when you put down the controller and do nothing. If you go to practice mode and then pause the game and wait for some time, you'll see a countdown timer appear. If you let this timer elapse, the game will kick you out back to the main menu. Wireframe mode is an exclusive mode of gameplay to Tekken 2. To access it, first you must unlock all characters. And then on the character select screen, press and hold L1 and L2 while selecting your fighter and keep them held until the stage loads. When the battle starts, you'll be in first person mode and your character will now be a green wireframe, rather than a fully textured character model. There's also another mode of gameplay which you can access in the same way. It's big head mode, of course, which turns your fighter into a caricature and gives them a high-pitched voice. To access this mode, this time you must hold select, choose your character, and hold down the buttons until the fight begins. A lesser known fact about this mode is that you can enable it more than once to get even bigger heads. The last of a trio of gameplay modes unlocked with button combinations is Sky Mode. On the character select screen, you have to press and hold select and up, meaning that whenever you activate Sky Mode, you will always activate Big Head Mode as well, because you're holding select. What Sky Mode does is allow you to perform more outrageous combos by launching the enemy higher when juggled and pushing them less far away. 
I've actually made two Sky Mode combo videos, which you can find in the video's description. Back in the good old days, each character had their own stage. And this is Jack 2's stage, which is named Akihabara, an area in Tokyo. Even though the Jack robots are from Russia, it's stated in the manual that Jack loves the mechanical factories found here. Anyway, the fact that I wanted to share with you is that on one of the buildings in the scenery, you can see KO lit up on it. This is of course short for Knockout, and is widely used in the Tekken games. It's not only Jack's stage that's based on a real life location, several more of them are as well. And you can see various landmarks in the background of them too. For example, you can see the famous Standing Stone Circle Stonehenge on Jun Kazama's stage. Paul's stage is located in New York, and you can not only see the Statue of Liberty, but the legendary Twin Towers in the scenery, which were of course still standing when Tekken 2 was released. On the first ever release of Tekken 2 in arcades, there was a glitch with Devil and Angel's uppercuts which would be fixed in all future versions of the arcade and console builds of Tekken 2. If the player performed a dragon uppercut and then immediately pressed left kick afterwards, then the rest of the move's animation would cancel, leading to some awesome combo opportunities. This is potentially caused by Kazuya's version of the same move, having the option to add a left or right kick input added after the uppercut, and this not being properly removed for Devil and Angel. You may have also heard of the character Dr. Boskonovich, who made his debut as a playable character in Tekken 3, and also featured in Tekken Tag Tournament 2. However, did you know that Dr. B made his debut on Tekken 2? He's not a playable character, but he appears in Yoshimitsu's ending movie, as Yoshi rescues him from a helicopter. Keeping with the theme of character's endings, King's movie features real, digitised children, rather than modelled characters like the playable roster. Interestingly, King's ending on Tekken 1 also featured digitised children, the only ending movies on both games to do so. Strange. Okay, another fact about the ending movies. If you've played both Tekken 1 and Tekken 2, Kuma's ending on this game might seem familiar. Well, that's because it's a parody of Paul's ending on Tekken 1. Let's take a look at them side by side. Speaking of Paul's ending, we see him and his good friend Marshall Law in the dojo. He attempts a spin kick but falls right on his face. The fact here is that Paul's somersault actually became a move later in the games. And this is where it originates from. Paul's first failed backflip right here on Tekken 2. Did you ever unlock Roger and Alex on this game? I assume you did, because I did as well, but I think it was more by chance than anything else. And that's because the process of unlocking Roger and Alex is quite unusual. On arcade mode, get to the point where you're facing the third opponent, and win the last round with less than 5% of your health remaining. You'll know you've done it right if the announcer says great when you KO the opponent. The next round will then be against Roger or Alex instead of one of the other characters. Beat Roger or Alex, beat arcade mode, and then boom, you've unlocked the kangaroo and dinosaur duo. There are a couple of Kazuya's moves on this game which you might not know exist. Well, sort of. Let me explain. So as we saw with Devil and Angel earlier, all three characters have access to the Dragon Uppercut, as do Heihachi and Armor King, while Roger and Alex have their own version of this move as well. Anyway, so you can follow this move up with either a left kick or a right kick. But the problem is that the Dragon Uppercut sends the opponent into the air, so the kick doesn't actually connect. There is another version of this move, if you can really call it that. It's done by pressing the exact same button combination. But if you're far enough away from the opponent, you can hit them with the Dragon Uppercut and they won't get launched into the air. Meaning that you can follow up with either a kick or a nice combo. 
Out of all the characters' endings on Tekken 2, have you ever wondered which ones are canonical? This means that the events are part of the series' storyline because they actually occurred within the Tekken universe. For example, Kazuya dropping Heihachi off the cliff in Tekken 1, and Heihachi scaling the cliff face at the start of Tekken 2. Officially, the canonical endings are Heihachi's, Michelle's, Jun's, and Roger's. The most notable of these is Heihachi's, as we see him drop Kazuya into a volcano, only for Kaz to return in Tekken 4. Like on other Tekken games, it's possible to select which win pose you want your character to perform after a round. This is done by holding either a punch button or kick button after you've KO'd your opponent. Did you know that this game has a theatre mode? A lot of people think that this was something which was introduced in Tekken 3, but no, it actually appeared on Tekken 2 first. But only on the Japanese version of the game for some reason. Here's how to access it. First you have to make sure that the second player's controller is unplugged. Then make sure you have a memory card inserted with Tekken 2 data on it, with all characters unlocked. Boot up the game and when you see the Namco Present screen, press and hold up, right, circle, X and select. If you've done everything right, you'll be greeted with the theatre mode screen instead of the normal startup process. From here you can choose to view the opening movies or any character's ending, meaning you don't have to go through arcade mode to watch them. Perfect for me when it came to recording this video. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you took the game CD and put it in a CD player? Well, wonder no more. You get three songs. The first one won't play, the second one is silent, but the third one works. It's actually the music that's used for the game's ending credits, so if you recognise it, that's why. Did you know that Devil and Angel have different sound effects for their laser moves? Obviously they have different voices, one being male and the other being female, but yeah, they actually have differences in their sound effects as well. I think you can hear it best during their wind poses. Have you ever known how to unlock Kazuya's third outfit, his purple suit? Like me, you might have just unlocked this by chance when you were younger. The actual criteria is to unlock every character on the game, highlight Kaz on the character select screen and press start. On the arcade versions of Tekken 2, there is a message that displays on the character select screen, which reads, learn the secret codes. This alludes to the fact that you have to input a specific button combination to play as any hidden character such as Roger, Armor King and Bruce. So what are these codes? To play as Roger, you have to insert a credit, then hold left kick and press start, up, up. To play as Kunimitsu, insert a credit, then hold left punch, press start, move to Yoshimitsu, then press right and then start. To play as Alex, insert a credit, then hold right kick and press start, up, up. To play as Kuma, insert a credit, then hold right punch and press start. Then move to Paul and press down, start, down. To play as Ganryu, insert a credit, then press start, move to Michelle, hold start and press down, up. To play as Wang, insert a credit, press start, move to Bayek if you're on version A or Jun on version B. Then press start, down, right, left, up. To play as Kazuya, insert a credit, press start, move to Heihachi, press down, up, then hold up, 
and press start, start, then release up and finally press up. To play as P-Jack, insert a credit, press start, move to Jack 2, press down, down, hold start and press up, up. To play as Armour King, insert a credit, press start, move to King, press left, hold start, press left, right, then release start and press right. Lastly, to play as Bruce, insert a credit, press start, move to lay, press start four times and then press right. As we've seen earlier in the video, Dr. Boskonovich made his debut in Tekken 2 in Yoshimitsu's ending movie. And well, one good Dr. B fact deserves another. Did you know that this character's name is a reference to another game made by Namco, named Bosconian, which was first released in 1981 and is a classic shoot'em up? P Jack has five throws on this game, and there's one in particular which is quite strange. It's the body smash and is performed by pressing down, back, right punch and left kick. What makes it strange is that the opponent will be standing after it, but if you follow up quickly enough with another move, the opponent will switch to being on the ground. This can lead to some cool combo opportunities. When playing as Kazuya, Roger will be the sub-boss you face on stage 8. If you lose to Roger and then select a new character when you continue, and pick Roger, you will now be facing Alex instead. This will force the game to change the stage that you're fighting on, from Roger's to Alex's. I believe this is the only instance of this happening. Tekken 3 brought us theatre mode for what we thought was the first time, only to learn that the Japanese version of Tekken 2 had it first all along. Anyway, there's a feature within Tekken 3's theatre mode that lets you watch the movies from Tekken 2. If you click the disc button, the game allows you to hot swap the Tekken 3 disc for the Tekken 2 disc. And then you can view any movies from T2. Similarly, you can press the music button and access all the music from Tekken 2. And play as many tracks as you like. Sadly, you can't listen to them while playing the game though. You might be familiar with Tekken 2's announcer. He's the guy that says things like, Round 1, Fight, and KO. Basically, he voices all the on-screen text. However, he has a line of dialogue that you probably never heard back in the days when Tekken 2 was first released. On the arcade version of Tekken 2, when the game is first switched on and booted up, the announcer will say, Good morning. The only way to hear this line back then was to be the person who switched the arcade machine on. Nowadays though, we can all hear it thanks to emulators like Mame. In fact, the only Tekken game to date which did not wish the player a good morning upon starting the arcade machine was Tekken 4. There's a really cool compilation of all of them on YouTube, which I'll link in the description. There were some moves on Tekken 2 that did not return on Tekken 3. One of the most notable of these, in my opinion, is King's Octopus Stretch, which you can see here. It was awesome. Nina also had a move that didn't return on Tekken 3. If you press left punch, right punch, then up, forwards and left kick, you'll perform this little trio of moves. This did not return on T3, possibly because it requires Nina to jump high into the air with the kick. On Tekken 3, the height that the characters could jump was vastly reduced. On the first ever arcade version of the game, which we've seen clips of earlier in the video, there was one notable difference staring us right in the face. When you hit an opponent, the blood is green rather than red. If you've ever done what we did earlier and listened to the Tekken 2 soundtrack on Tekken 3's theatre mode, you might have noticed that there is a medley included. 
both in the arcade and remix styles. On the arcade version of Tekken 2, the medley was used as the music for the video at the end of Arcade Mode, which shows you defeating all the opponents you faced. However, to my knowledge, the remixed version of the medley was never used on the console version of Tekken 2. On the arcade version of the game, Angel wasn't a complete character yet. She had no voice and she was still called Devil back then as well. Back on the arcade version of the game, again, Kazuya in his purple suit was unplayable. Even if you entered the secret code that we saw earlier in the video, you'd still only be able to choose between his two standard costumes. That's because the AI version of Kaz with his purple suit was coded into the game as an entirely separate character to the normal, playable Kaz. One of the new characters introduced on Tekken 2 was Lei Wulong, the Hong Kong police detective who enters the King of Iron Fist tournament to confront Kazuya, as he believes he has ties with the Mafia. The inspiration for the character of Lei was, of course, Jackie Chan. Another new character to the series at this time was Bayek Dosan. Bayek was named after Bayek Dusan, a mountain that is split between the Chinese and North Korean border. There's a piece of music on the arcade mode soundtrack called Middle Boss, and it's named that because it's the theme that's given to every middle boss that you face on arcade mode. It doesn't matter which character it is, or which stage you're on, it'll always be the middle boss theme that plays. <laughs> Have you ever been fighting on King stage and noticed the painting on the wall in the background? This is actually a real life painting. It's actually a work by the famed Michelangelo, and in real life it can be seen as part of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. On the first version of Tekken 2 in arcades, there was an issue with one of Bruce's throws. Maybe other ones too, but this is just one that I picked up on while making the video. When the opponent is thrown, the wrong sound effect plays, 
It plays a clip from an entirely different character for some reason. I hope that this isn't just an emulator glitch, but it's the only way I can play the arcade versions these days. There are two characters on the game that are basically two characters in one. Roger and Alex, and Angel and Devil. What's interesting about this is that if you set any kind of record on the game with either Alex or Angel, they will be recorded as records achieved while using Roger or Devil. There's also something else that's interesting about the game's record keeping. If you look at the records which occupy the 21st and 22nd slots, you might notice that they're spelled incorrectly, as 21st and 22 Did you know that it's possible to take out the entirety of the opponent's health with just one combo? You probably did to be honest, but I wanted to make sure that I included some clips from the actual gameplay of Tekken 2 in this video. It felt a bit weird to just be showing the menus and stuff like that. Here's an example of one I did with Roger. Wang has a throw on this game called Waning Moon. Along with P-Jack's Body Slam, it's probably one of the most useful throws in the game, especially when it comes to combos. After the throw connects, it's possible to run up to the opponent and land some shots while their back is turned for a lot of extra damage. And lastly, here we are at number 50. And I have another stage related fact for you. Did you know that the scenery on p stage is a reference to the Planet of the Apes movie? On the film, the Statue of Liberty was embedded in the sand, but here, it's actually Big Ben from London. And with that done, I hope you've enjoyed another 50 Things video. Be sure to look out for more in the future and subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure you get notified about future episodes. Thanks for watching.